Forces are difficult to describe, but if the word force makes you think of pushing or pulling, then you're on the right track. Let's have a technical definition of a force. A force is an influence on a particle with mass that changes its speed. In other words, if you have some object and you change its velocity, as in you make it accelerate or decelerate, then you're applying a force to that object. Anything that makes an object with mass accelerate is force. Think ropes and pulleys, pushes and pulls, magnets and gravity, and you're thinking about forces. A force has two quantities, a magnitude, as in how big it is, and a direction. Let's have a look at the basic equation for a force. F equals ma. This equation reads force equals mass times acceleration. Force is measured in newtons, n. Mass is measured in kilograms, kgs, and acceleration in meters per second per second. The equation is for a net force, so it's the combination of all the forces acting in the same or opposite directions on an object. If forces are acting in the same direction, they're added together. If forces are acting in opposite directions, they're subtracted. If the net force equals zero, the force is said to be balanced, and the object doesn't accelerate or change speed. If the net force doesn't equal zero, then it is unbalanced and the object is accelerated. This can be shown on a free body diagram. In the center you have your personal particle and you show the force by both its direction and its size. If forces are unbalanced, the arrows should be drawn different lengths. James and William play tug of war and they both pull with the same force but in opposite directions. The net or combined force is zero and therefore is balanced. But if James pulls with 200 newtons, and William pulls with 150 newtons of force, then 200 newtons minus 150 newtons is 50 newtons in James's direction, and he wins. Mass and weight are not the same thing, although we often swap the words around as if they are. Weight is a force applied by the gravity of another object. Gravity is a very weak force, but the bigger and closer an object gets, the stronger the gravitational force. The Earth is very heavy and very close, right? So its gravitational force upon us is pretty strong. Earth's gravity makes objects accelerate at about 10 meters per second per second. This is called the constant for gravitational acceleration for objects near the Earth's surface. So weight is the force on an object that has gravitational acceleration applied to it. If my mass is 75 kilos, and the gravitational acceleration of objects in free fall near Earth is 10 meters per second per second, then the equation for the weight force is F equals MA equals 75 kilos times 10 meters per second per second equals 750 newtons. And the direction of this weight force is downwards. There is another force, often ignored, that is sometimes important. This is friction and it's a resistive force. That is, it's the force that slows down an object when it's sliding across a surface or moving through the air. There are two types of friction. The first is static friction, and is the force required to make something start moving. Ever notice when you try to slide something across a table, it sort of sticks to the table at first, and as you increase the force of your push against it, it sort of gives up being stuck to the table and starts moving? That's because when you start pushing the object, a force in the opposite direction is applied by the resistance between the object and the table. Friction. It perfectly matches your force, and so the net force is balanced and nothing happens. But the friction can only be so big, and eventually your force gets bigger, and the net force becomes unbalanced, and the thing moves. The second type of friction is air resistance. Imagine you're falling towards Earth. Remember the gravitational acceleration, g, of objects near Earth? You're accelerating, right? You get faster and faster, but then you stop accelerating and fall only at a constant speed. This is your terminal velocity, and it changes depending on how much drag you have in the air. As you fall towards Earth, the air in the atmosphere is pushing up against you, 
and eventually the resistance of the air against you becomes equal to the force of gravity pulling you down. This makes the net force zero, and so is balanced, and you stop accelerating. The last thing concerning forces is pressure. Pressure might seem similar to force, and that's because they're related. Pressure is force per unit area. The equation for pressure is pressure equals force divided by area. Where force is measured in newtons, A is area and is measured in meters squared, and pressure is measured in newtons per meter squared. If I applied a force of 24 newtons to a wall using my finger with an area of 0.06 meters squared, the pressure against the wall would be equal to P equals F divided by A equals 24 newtons divided by 0.06 meters squared equals 400 newtons per meter squared. We'd read this as saying, for every square meter of wall, there is a force of 400 newtons. Now think what the pressure would be if I applied the same force, but used the area of my whole hand. Pressure is useful because a force on a big area creates a smaller pressure than the same force on a smaller area. Some things to remember. Force is applied when a mass is accelerated. Forces in the same direction add, and opposite directions subtract. Weight is a force applied by gravity. Friction is a resistive force. Pressure is force per unit of area.